This video is about tuning up TPRD 1554 cavity duplexers. In a previous video, I showed you how to tune TPRC 1505 uh, pass reject cavity duplexers. This is a single unit and the response is on the uh, right there. So we have a loss of about uh, 0.73 dB and a uh, notch of about 33 dB with a return loss of about 23 dB, which is uh, good for a single cavity. In a TPRD 1554, which is what we're building, cavity 1 and 2 are coupled together with an appropriate length of cable, which will actually achieve more notch depth than a wider peak and match bandwidth compared to each single cavity. Cable length between cavities is part of the tuning for any multi-cavity filter and should be selected carefully. We'll talk about that in a little bit. On the other uh, side of the duplexer, the back half here, I've done exactly the opposite that I did on the front half. The notches in the uh, low side and the passes on the high side, but otherwise the results come out about the same as you can see. I've expanded the view out so you can see it a little better. It's 2 megahertz wide instead of 5 megahertz wide. So that's the difference between the two uh, sweeps here. I've disassembled this, taken the uh, end to end T out, uh, put it in between the tracking generator here and the spectrum analyzer there. And this is the coupling cable for these two cans, which I've disconnected on this end so that it's uh, open ended. And if this is open and it's a quarter wavelength, then that'll be a short at that end. So we'll take a look at uh, where it's resonant in a second here. Then I also extended it somewhat to get an idea how far it moves every time I put about an inch on this uh, adapter from the end of this to here is about an inch. And then I also put a, another uh, adapter on there which I happen to have, and this is also uh, a, an extension of about another inch, so it's about two inches from this point to this point. So let's take a look at those patterns and see what they look like. And I did the same thing with this other cable, which is for the other two cans, and it's the same length. As you can see, number one there is at uh, 164.9, so about 165. Number two has dropped with the one inch down to uh, 152.4. Number three, his uh, two inches has dropped to 144. And the desired resonance is 155. So why is our cable, as uh, seen on the sweep we just looked at, so much higher in frequency than where we think the cable needs to be one quarter wavelength? Well, the uh, measurements being taken at the end of this connector right here. And uh, you can see that there's a gap here going into the can. And there's a little bit of length on the inside which goes to the loop. And that actually will lower the uh, quarter wave resonance of, uh, of this cable here. Um, Looks like about uh, three quarters of an inch there, less than three quarters, maybe a half, three eighths of an inch there, probably uh, eighth inch thickness here, and a little bit on the inside where they make connections and so forth. So you're talking about a half inch to three quarters of an inch of difference there, which is going to lower the resonance. Half an inch, of course, so it would be somewhere between uh, 164. 9, uh, 64 9 and 152 4. So it would get you around in the 155 uh, megahertz region. And this is one reason that at the plants where they tune these up, they actually have a wall of cables that are about the right length as, uh, as this cable here. But they have some that are quarter inch longer, quarter inch shorter, maybe half inch longer, half inch shorter. And if they come into a problem with tuning, uh, and getting optimum results, they'll just pull a different cable down, stick it in there, and uh, determine what length is actually the correct length.
for the particular uh, set of cans that's being used here. And then uh, they'll have a cable of that length made to uh, put into the duplexer to optimize the performance. And you can do the same thing. On the left we have the original uh, single cavity. You see about 33 dB on the notch there. And uh, we have a loss of uh, 0.73. On the right, we have a different scale. It's 10 dB per division. But anyway, we have 76 dB. That's two cans with the proper cable connecting them. And about uh, 1.1 dB, uh, 1.2 dB of loss, 76.4 dB of notch. So obviously we've made a significant improvement because 33 plus 33 would be only be 66. There are three basic measurements we now want to make to see how we're doing. We're going from the tracking generator through the uh, transmitter cavities to the spectrum analyzer input here. And that gives us an idea what uh, the loss is from the transmitter to the antenna. Trace number one, the yellow trace, shows you the response of the transmitter when tested in this manner. Next we'll test the uh, loss from the antenna, or the tracking generator in this case, uh, through the receive pass reject cavities into the spectrum analyzer to get a, an idea of the loss um, when going through this part of the completed duplexer. The blue trace in this case shows the receive response, and uh, this is from the antenna through to the receiver. The last thing we want to see is what the uh, loss is from the transmitter through to the receiver. In other words, the isolation between the two. As you can see, there's uh, two deep notches here of over 70 dB, and uh, those are the pass notch notches. So we have very good isolation at uh, the problem frequencies for transmit energy getting into the receiver and transmit noise getting into the receiver. But we still have pretty good isolation even further than that on either side by a couple of megahertz. I believe this span is uh, 5 megahertz. Uh, yeah, 5 megahertz. So um, anything that's coming out of the transmitter in those areas, spurious otherwise, uh, are going to be suppressed by at least, what, 46, 47 dB. And of course, finally, you do want to uh, double check your return loss to make sure you have a good match on the transmit channel to the antenna. And as you can see, we have a very, very good return loss on the transmit channel going to the antenna. That's number three there, which is 44 dB return loss. Very good in anybody's book. 20 dB is fine. And um, the uh, purple line down there, number four, is 49 dB. That's the actual uh, reference load. And looking from the antenna back at the transmitter output and receiver input, this could be considered the receive match. You uh, use this test setup. And as you can see with the yellow line, uh, number one there is at uh, 27, and number two is at uh, 28 and um, change. Uh, so they're both well below the 20 dB level, which is what we want to see. And uh, so I think that everything's tuned up the way we want it to tune. So we discussed various things in this uh, fairly long session. We tuned cavity 1 and 2 using the TPRC 1505 video. Same thing with 3 and 4. Uh, we coupled the cavities together with the tuned coax and checked the results on uh, 1 and 2 and then on 3 and 4. We discussed and showed the positive effect of using proper cable lengths and uh, the effects on resonance of various coax cable lengths uh, by cutting the coax or extending the coax, actually using adapters. Then we did some final tests on the insertion loss and return loss on uh, the various ports of the finalized duplexer.